We put the fun in funeral, don't we, Kyle? <laughs> I said, don't we? Yeah, I guess, I guess we can. <laughs> Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Kyle McWatters. I'm Taylor McWatters. And this week, we're talking about top 10 epic funerals in history. Kicking off our list at number 10, Rudolph Valentino. Okay, talk about a drama queen right off the bat. This list is inspiring, I'll tell you that. I got so many ideas while we were making this. Back in the 1920s, famous movie star, a handsome lad too, might I add, he passed away at age 31, Rudolph Valentino. The funeral, of course, was busy. Many fans came to pay their respects, but it was too much, you know? Everybody was really, really upset, almost too upset for the average folk, even them that were related to the actual actor. They're like, what's going on here? Turns out many of the thousands of fans were paid by the funeral organizer, Frank E. Campbell. They were paid to act as hysterical as they could. Really ham it up, you know? Yeah, even in death, the theatrics are still present. Guy was committed, not gonna lie. I'm taking, I'm taking a few pages from your book. Number nine, John Lennon. We could all use a little help from our friends. A proper scouse funeral, huh? Something nice and quiet. Unfortunately, there was no epic funeral for John Lennon, just a private cremation. Classy. However, Yoga Ono, John's partner, held a vigil for the Beatle on December 14, 1980, with 10 minutes of silence. Lennon's ashes were scattered in Central Park, where now he lies, a memorial service called Strawberry Fields. Didn't end up very nice and quiet, however. Around 30,000 fans flocked to his hometown of Liverpool, England. 50,000 of those headed to Central Park to mourn. Imagine they had a place picked out and a date for them like weeks ahead. There'd be millions of people at this. Safe call and something nice and quiet. Number eight, Andrew Jackson. Kyle and I grew up with pets. We had dogs, we had some cats that didn't like humans at all. We had hamsters, a bird for a hot minute. You name it, we loved it. Former President Andrew Jackson passed away in 1845. He passed before his pet parrot did. So the parrot, of course, attended the funeral, right? How lovely is that? I bet after I said that, you yourself said, oh, that's lovely, right? I know. Thing is, the parrot also loved to curse, loved to swear as loud as a parrot could. This parrot actually heckled and cursed so much that they had to remove it during the funeral. How amazing is that? His parrot was giving him his own eulogy. A proper parrot send off, like a true pirate. Or, I don't know, vulgar parrot. Number seven, Elvis Presley. The king himself. The funeral of Elvis Presley took place on August 18th, 1977, and was most definitely fit for a king with thousands of fans in Memphis for days following his death. Even though the funeral was closed to the public, didn't stop about 25,000 fans from swarming his Graceland mansion to pay their respects. 30,000 fans were let in for a public viewing of the casket, and 80,000 people, that's a stadium full of baseball fans, came to watch the funeral procession lining the streets with handmade signs expressing their sadness and mourning for Presley. I hope at least some people were playing his music because a lot of his songs I hear at funerals. Are you lonesome tonight? Number six, Alexander the Great. When your name is Alexander the Great, nobody will be shocked when you have a great epic funeral, right? One of the original empire builders of ancient Rome, this Macedonian king died at age 32, and this was all the way back in 323 BCE. Now, historians believe that he caught malaria or was poisoned. It was a fast demise, right? Such a powerful leader, how do you pay respects at that point? Well, with a lot of gold, just the wrong, the wrong choices for everyone involved. Just let's spend all of our money. Alexander the Great was said to have been put in a sarcophagus made entirely of solid gold. And then said sarcophagus was placed in a casket made also entirely of solid gold. And from Babylon, he traveled all the way to Greece using 64 mules, just totally worth it for everyone's starving. Let's use 64 mules over here though. And at the end of said road, another tomb awaited with, you guessed it, more solid gold. So moral of the story, if you die, just surround yourself in gold. That's it, now everybody else is broke because you're staying up. <laughs> Hashtag staying up. Number five, Michael Jackson. Lots of kings on this one, huh? The king of pop himself and my hero growing up, Michael Jackson. His funeral, much like him, lavish in riches and very, very expensive. About a million. The casket was escorted by Jackson's brothers, each wearing a single sequined white glove on the hand in which they held the casket. Yeah, those are really heavy. We've carried a couple, trust us. With those slippery gloves too? 
Okay. Jackson was originally to be buried on what would have been his 51st birthday. However, the services were postponed and he was instead laid to rest at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, his hometown. It is said that the media attention alone was almost double the coverage of John Pope II's funeral. Yeah, that's like a Super Bowl. Every time I hear Michael Jackson's song, Smile, I cry. Yeah, I cry. And I think about his legacy. The man has left behind a legacy. The talent, the humanitarianism, a true king. Rest in peace, dog. Number four, Princess Diana. A little more modern than Alexander the Great, but with a new era of technology comes a new era of mourning. Instead of thousands of fans acting hysterical at Princess Diana's funeral, it was also broadcast live. And just, just in case you missed it, you know, in case you couldn't make the trip. The Princess of Wales was 20 when she married Prince Charles, and the amount of fame that she got thrown into, plus conspiracies, I mean, we're still talking about her death today. I can't help it. Streets of London were filled, but about 2.5 billion people also tuned in to watch from their homes. That was half of the world's population in 1997. Today, it's a little different. Today, I mean, Roar by Katy Perry right now has 3.6 billion views, so, oh, how the times have changed, my friends. Number three, Willie Wolf Johnson. Old Willie went out with a bang, I'll tell you that for free. You ever go to a funeral that doesn't have food? Do you want our funeral to be next, dude? Uh, yeah, hi, we're hungry. We'd like to eat. We all took the day off work, you know? And we're sad too. We missed breakfast as well. Where are the bagels? Willie Wolf Johnson is the voice behind the Chili's Baby Back Rib commercial. He was that deep voice that said, barbecue sauce. I tried. He loved his work. He loved that everybody knew him for the Chili's theme. He leaned in and had fun. Cut to his funeral in 2012. He was laid to rest in a coffin, shaped like a barbecue smoker. Hey, no judgment. His funeral was also full of ribs. There we go. There was a barbecue sauce fountain and even some live pigs walking around for some reason, I don't know why. The pallbearers made the image complete by wearing aprons and the preacher wore a chef's hat. Classy. <laughs> Number two, Jim Henson. Of course Jim Henson is on our list today. Come on, this is the funeral that I want, let alone the creator of Muppets. Come on, we gotta talk about this. Jim Henson is slash was an icon. He's a staple in our childhoods. He directed The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. He worked on Sesame Street. This man taught me how to read, okay? Jim passed away in 1990 after a lung infection, but prior to his untimely death, Jim had made it very clear how he wanted to be remembered. With some joy, right? Yeah, God forbid we have a little fun on the day we all celebrate your life. Also, let's throw in a Muppet or two. Please, that, wouldn't, that definitely wouldn't hurt. There was also a jazz band. Nobody was allowed to wear black at the funeral. There were musical performances, and of course, the Muppets made an appearance. And coming in at number one, Hunter S. Thompson. This guy makes our number one just for the absolute explosion at his funeral, literally. Attendees at the private funeral on August 20th, 2005 include small Hollywood names such as Johnny Depp, Sean Penn, Jack Nicholson, just to name a few. In Woody Creek, Colorado, the ashes of Thompson were blown into the sky from a 47 meter tower as relatives and star-studded crowds bid a farewell to the founder of gonzo journalism himself. As the ashes erupted from the tower's mouth, red, white, blue, and green fireworks lit up all over the sky around Thompson's home for nearly 10 minutes straight as the crowd cheered. Yeah, it took all about 34 seconds to light it and fire it. It was later reported Johnny Depp himself paid around three million for the event, which included its construction of the 150 foot tower topped with Thompson's signature symbol, a double thumbed clenched fist clutching a peyote button. That's a friend right there. No, doing exactly what you want. However weird it is, it may seem to others. However loud and extravagant, life's precious, isn't it? And it's worth living. How do you wanna go, Taylor? I wanna go Viking style, you know what I mean? Just put me in a boat, ship me out, and everyone's just like, just hear the whistle of 40 arrows. And I, no one hits me. I was gonna say, I'd probably miss all those yeah, shots. They'd yeah, be like, no ah, one. can I have an eighth? He's gone, he no, went over the waterfall. Everyone's getting another shot. Yeah. Those are the top 10 epic funerals in history. If you want a part two, yeah, there's, there's a few more epic funerals, I'd say. We've been to a couple. We've been to a couple, all right. I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. I'm Taylor McWaters. See you next time on Bumblebee. <laughs> that was our list, uh, I forgot the title. <laughs> Number four, I don't know why my hands are here. I'm like, yo, what's up? <laughs> you bet, Taylor. Welcome back to Bumblebee, I'm Kyle McWaters. And here are the top 10 funeral. Oh, my name. Forgot Sorry. my name. You bet, Taylor. Welcome back to. Almost a million dollar baby off that box right there. Oh. It's a casket. We're doing it's a casket. casket. I see. This is lovely. Oh my god. This man's gonna take me out. I'm like, yo, just carry me. Sing, sing at my funeral. Whatever happens.